right welcome back so we're back on the Creighton um, couple things uh, with this Creighton my son uh, was working on it for about three hours last night I didn't film it because it was my son working on it um, and he's in the process of learning um, I think it's a skill that uh, every young kid should know and uh, and uh, he's picking it up and growing very fond of it. So I'm not going to throw a camera in his face and film him um, wrenching. But uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and pull the diff out today. Um, because in the last video when I was running it, I heard like a strip gear sound. And it concerns me. So um, we're going to take a look at it and see what's going on. So, I did get a wheelie bar put on it. We did get the, the droop screws installed all the way around, as you see. You know, we can pick it up. The arms are straight. The axles are straight now. I adjusted the front as well. So that, uh, you know, the droop is where I like it. Um, some people like a lot more droop for a softer landing. My son's going to be driving this. So the chassis, you know, is probably, well, the shocks look like they're going to bottom out before the chassis ever does. Yeah. The front bottoms out, but the rear won't bottom out. So I might take a look at uh, raising up these shocks a little bit um, just so the chassis will bottom out um, rather than the shock or maybe put fuel tubing in it I don't know but uh, I want to pop off this diff on the rear and see what's going on I really don't want to take this wing off I'll probably just take this top part wing off these wing supports and the way it works with this brace is actually a lot of work um, to uh, to get this wing mount back out of here so I'm going to try to avoid that. I'll probably just take the wing off itself. Um, my uh, vision is still foggy, so I do have trouble seeing. That's why my videos aren't as smooth as they normally are. <laughs> Not that they were ever that smooth, but... Um, it, I think wrenching is definitely helping me, um, at least with, uh, therapeutic, gives me something to do all day. Uh, and that's what RC is about, having fun, getting out there, wrenching. I am watching, uh, SRC, Street Racing Channel, is, uh. He's gone live, the old man, so I've got that playing in the background. But I really want to get this diff out because I want to run my EXP tomorrow, and I'd like my son to run this tomorrow. I am going to leave the big tires on it for now um, and see if everything holds up. So I'm really curious to see what, uh, what made that noise, honestly. And it only did it a couple of times. That's what's got me bumfounded. Is that, you know, on a hard pull from a dig, it made like a stripping noise. Um, so it's very possible that, uh, that it might need another shim or so to make it tighter. I just don't know. Me and diffs don't get along. They never have. I've never really had diff issues. Let's see if I can get to these bolts without... These upper bolts are a little bit of a struggle when the wing's on. these end links here for the sway bar I tend not to put 
them too tight because they will snap. So make sure you don't crank these, these little screws down. I was showing my son how to set it and check it. And then I noticed that the that he's got it adjusted pretty good. So one thing you gotta love about Arma is that uh they sure make the diffs easy to get to for servicing. And uh even in my my uh slashes, you know, I never really had like diff issues. Oh well, you can see plenty of grease on the inside of these things. Oh this thing's got a ton of shims in it. Oh, but there's there's a lot of movement. Wonder why that is. Yeah, it's definitely the rear diff. For some reason, it's got a lot of side to side movement. And he's got a ton of shims in it too. Yeah, pressed in. I can still slide the diff, but it's funny. It's on the back side of the bearing. Wonder why that is. You can tell he looped it up very nice, but look at all these shims. It's definitely got plenty of shims in there. Just don't know why we're getting so much movement. Like that should have been plenty. I've never had to run more than two, but bearings feel great. I don't know. Looks like three shims. Yeah, three. He's got three shims in there. I think I know what it is. This bearing has uh, got a lot of wobble to the outer skirt. I don't see why that would create a problem. Well, let me, I'm going to look for some shims. Hopefully I got uh, enough shims to shim this thing tighter. We'll be right back. All right, so I've spent the last couple hours looking for shims. Got my diff case out here. But since I just did um, the diff on the EXB, I don't have any shims. So I think what I'm gonna do is try changing out this bearing. Um, and look at this diff. I don't understand why it's so, diffs so I'm gonna take a look and see if maybe I can double up on the gasket to make it tighter because I do have a gasket and that'll fatten this up but it's gonna fatten it up the wrong way because I want it tighter that way so I'm not sure so it's got a sealed bearing on one side um, this one, it could have been a sealed bearing. I'm going to swap out the bearings and see if I can get this thing a little fatter. Maybe, uh, maybe I have some bearings that are fatter. So we're going to crack this thing open and, uh, and take a look at it. Oh, 
bolts are nice and tight. fluid so yeah check to make sure that there is a gasket I think the gasket's right here yeah so there is a gasket. So I'm going to clean this out. We're going to throw some some thicker. Uh, I think Deontay was saying he put tin in it. Um, so I'm going to probably top it off with tin. Maybe go up to 30, 35, I think. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to in this tray we're gonna let it sit we're gonna see how much fluid comes out so when you're doing these big jobs you definitely gotta have diff fluids um, chef Beardsley I need to get him he's having trouble finding one million and I have I think four bottles of one million I got two in here but I, I packaged one up and put it in my car and then had the accident last Saturday and literally the package has been sitting in that car um, because I haven't been driving because of my vision. So I definitely got to get down and, uh, and get him some 1 million diff fluid headed his way. Apparently there's a shortage in it and uh, no hobby shops have it. And I know it to be true because my hobby shop doesn't have any 1 million either. And that's where I buy it from. As you notice, all the bottles are the same. So I have 42.5, which we used on, was this shock fluid? Yeah, this is shock fluid. That's shock, shock, diff fluid, I got 500K. I got 15k I usually don't have any of that low stuff silicone diff this says 600 that stuff's pretty thick 600 is pretty thick this is diff fluid this is 15k yeah we're gonna run with 15k um, yeah, 15K is going to be great. What is this? Shock oil. I don't know why my diff oil and shock oils are mixed up. I got to pick up some more shock fluid. I'm, I'm running real low on shock fluid. I've got plenty of diff, diff fluids. These seem to be all diff and these are shock. I've been, uh, doing a lot of shocks. But... Factory team, silicone diff fluid. Don't use shock fluid for diff fluid. Use diff fluid. Uh, the viscosity is different. You can see what's coming out of that. So while that's draining, I've got to take this gear set out anyway. So that's how I do that. Let me see if I can find my pick. So I'm gonna take the little grub screw out because we gotta pull the pin because I wanna change the bearings. So I gotta pull these diff cups off. And it's funny, these diffs, there's like no wear on these diff cups. You wanna see, here's what my diff cups look like. This is two hard runs on 8S. 
this is my lock diff. And when you lock a diff, this was in the EXB, you can see how it tears it up, how bad those diff cups are. Look at that. So bad. But you can see the quality that uh, Deontay sent to me. There is no wear on these diff cups, which is awesome. Which means there's no runtime on them. Oh, I didn't even have to take out that. Uh... Yeah, see, this was the one. I'll show you this bearing. So this is what I'm seeing, a shielded bearing. And what I'm seeing on this one, I'll pull the, the cup out of that one too, and we'll take a look at it. Ooh, that was in there. Something's going on. I don't know what, but we'll take a look at these bearings. See how that's a that's a brand new bearing right there. Brand new uh, sealed bearing, and that's a shielded bearing. Um, there's not a. I don't think there's a seal supposed to be on top of that. There might have been, and the seal's gone. But usually when there's a seal, there's a raised lip, and I don't feel a raised lip. But I'm gonna pop this out. Maybe it's supposed to be a sealed bearing and the seal just fell out. Yeah, see? It's a shielded bearing. And then this one is a brand new sealed bearing. I can tell this bearing's brand new. This, be this bearing feels really good. So this tool... I have here this uh, old tool I have the bearings fit perfect on it so I can check them and it's just one of those you know what I mean I wish everybody would do that put that on a tool so you can check your bearings but let me see what bearings I got these blue ones these are Boca bearings, very high expensive bearings. And the rest of these are fast eddies. These are fast eddy bearings. These are shielded bearings. And then I should have some. Some green ones. I know the blue ones are, uh, are Boca's. And then the green ones are the higher end fast eddy sealed bearings. And all I do is check them. See, that's a sealed bearing. That one feels really good. I wonder if I should put a shielded bearing or a sealed bearing. So factory is running a sealed bearing. These are factory bearings. They're black sealed bearings. So I'm going to put some sealed bearings in this. I'm not going to use Boca bearings because it's a basher. But I am going to use um, the Fast Eddy upgraded bearings, which are the green ones. Um, I do have black ones too, which are the like $18 See, like this one, that's a Fast Eddy $18 bearing. These are the upgraded um, bearings from Fast Eddy. They'll come with the green seal. And then the blue seal are the Boca bearings. And these are really good, good bearings. These are very expensive. And you see, see how thin that seal is? You can see how thick that seal is. I think this is this might be a thinner one. I'm gonna to try to match it up. See, the factory ones are thinner. Maybe I'll just stick two of the black bearings in there. I mean, it is a basher. You know, my son's gonna beat the crap out of this thing. I try to save the good bearings, the better bearings for my speed cars. So, and, and I will save, these bearings aren't bad. At least I didn't even check this one. 
the shield in one. Yeah, see? The sealed in one is good. There's nothing wrong with that bearing. There's no slop, no wiggle left and right. But there was wiggle on the case when I had it in there. I wonder if this case is uh is wore out. See, there's a lot of wiggle on that case. And it's plastic, you know? I figure something's causing it to uh, to require a bunch of shims. I mean, Deontay's got three shims in there, you know? I mean, it looks like it's a metal sleeve. Do I have another case broke down? See, I do. I have another case. It's an EXB case. Oh, there's the shim I was looking for. So... There's one of the shims I was looking for. That shim goes, see, and that's, that's, he's right, because that's a shielded bearing. So I wonder if bearings only come in the EXB, and, yeah, see, that's a shielded bearing too. So yeah, the I have a diff from a limitless in there. And that's what this is. I want to make sure there's no shim supposed to be on the back side. I think that's the shim we were missing. That little shim right there. I want to make sure there's no shim on this side. And there's not. So that's all I see missing. So I'm going to keep this. Did I leave that sun in there? Yeah. Now I get it. I don't remember everything and I probably should open up an owner's manual. But this shim needs to go on the back side, which is behind the bearing. Which is definitely going to give us some more tightness and then throw those three. I might be okay. We might be able to get this done. The O-ring is in there. See, and there's a, there's a washer behind that sun gear, too, on this one. But this one doesn't have a washer. So I think what I'm going to do is use this diff cup. And I'm going to put these, these shielded bearings, because that's... Well, no, I'm going to upgrade it. I'm in here. So that's got a washer on that side. There's no washer. So yeah. That's what we're going to do. We're going to use this uh, this diff cup. Because I know that di this diff cup is brand new. I bought it um, for my YouTube infraction that... Uh, Where'd that washer go? Oh, man, I almost lost that washer. So, I'm going to put that washer back in there. Put, oh, don't forget the bearings. And do a sealed bearing. Yeah, that feels good. Get this in here. Oh. That O-ring popped up. And that's what happens. Is that when you're putting this stuff together. There we go. Really want to push that O-ring. So it's sitting in there nice.
things nice and flat. And we're going to grab our pin. So you can see washer down behind the pin. You can tell this is my diff cup because I have the plug in any other one we pulled the plug out, which is this one. So I know this is a brand new, never run before uh, diff because I bought it from Jenny's RC. See the spider gears? See how clean they are? You can tell the difference which ones have been run and which ones haven't. You can see how silver these are and how dark those are. So, not like it matters. I'd rather use these because this is going to be a basher and save those for my speed cars. So I'm going to get this uh, sun gear dropped in here. i got to get my flathead put back together. And then we are going to take these spider gears I gotta flip them over and put them in this. Drop them in, these need to push out. Straighten these out. Push them out, push them out. Make sure they sit down in there. Looking good. Like I've done this once. I really don't like working on diffs. I don't have a lot of experience with them because I just don't break them. But that's me. So now we're going to clean up this. And put this bearing in there. Because on the other one, I think it just stuck to the bearing by accident. this honestly should be on that side to hold that seal down yeah take our other pin Slip it through here. Take our sun gear. Wow, I can't believe I just dumped that thing upside down. throw our 15k I'm gonna put this grub screw in my dish over here of parts we don't need this anymore I'm gonna throw these used bearings in here this diff cup I'm gonna go in there now we're gonna fill this up with 15k See if we can get some feeling out of this thing. I probably should have left this upside down for a minute. So I'm going to pause it. I'm going to fill this up, let this settle. I'll turn the camera on when we're assembling it. All right, back again. So it's been sitting for a couple hours. I'm taking long breaks in between this. I'm um, thinking about this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swap out the gasket. Um, just in case um, it's not, it's an old gasket. Um, 
Not sure if that could create the thickness, but you can see how old and wore out the gasket is. And I got a brand new gasket, basically. You can see how bad that gasket is. So just to be safe, I have a gasket, so I'm going to, uh, to add that gasket. And the only reason I'm changing up the bearings and the gasket and all this stuff while I'm in here is I'm trying to get the thickness back in there, hoping that with those shims that Deontay provided that I can squish it tighter in some way. So that's the plan and that's what we're going to try. see a little bit of fluid squeezed out the one hole which is normal any excess that's why I try to leave one till the end I'm gonna let it sit for a second and then we're gonna double check the torque meanwhile making sure that you spin it and that the bearings are on I think these went yeah they go over the diff cup <laughs> which the diff goes in this way look really thin but it should be enough I wish I had more shims I just I don't but I've never had to put over two shims so but like I said I don't do many diffs because they usually always work so I'm going to try, I probably should do this without uh, putting the axles in. So the shims, of course, didn't pop in. They're hanging out all over the place. Yeah, it just pushes the shims out of the way. As much as my eyes can see anyway. I can't see I'm so blind right now yeah so it literally that's what's going on it's folding up these shims like one shims not even like two went in there but that third shim is not gonna go in it just pushes out everywhere. This one shim. I think it does need the three because they're thin. 
the problem is that shim is just too wavy and I'm too blind right now all my axles are falling out which I think I'm gonna just leave the axles out and put them in after because I can't fight with those and these these shims The shim is just folding instead of going in the groove. Yeah. I can't tell if the back side of the shim is in. See, before I pulled it out, these two shims were perfectly installed. Now it's not. It's just bending up the shims so they don't sit in there right. So oh, much better that time. Now they're sitting in the right spot. So I have no more, no more side to side movement with three shims in there. Yep. All the side to side movement. So it looked like the two shims fit perfectly and now where's the cover I should add some grease let me find some grease all right I'm gonna keep some light on this just because my eyes are so messed up I'm gonna add a little grease this gear. I think the grease Deontay had in here was actually better. when I pop this cover on I got to get those shins into that groove which one of them is sticking out a little bit but I think it'll be fine if I go in like this see it didn't go in literally bunching up against that shim. No, nope, I felt the shims fold. Yep. What is going on here? I'm trying to line this cover up properly. There we go. It went in. Went in flat. Yep. Finally got on the right side of those shims. I tell you what, that's probably the toughest time I had putting in 
like this darn wheelie bars in my way. just in my way. God. This is ridiculous. just take off this wing easily I would just do that but I'm gonna get these bolts bolted down we'll be right back all right I got it bolted in um, I want to show you guys right now when I first checked this I had a bunch of um, side to side movement that I could move it back and forth now I've got zero. Now I do have a wobble, which are on the shafts, which is normal. Um, I think it's normal. Pretty sure it's normal. And awfully close to those control arms right there oh I see what's going on so the control arms are hitting the diff Why is that? Why is this one hitting the diff? Yeah, something <clears throat> Something's going on with these lower control arms. I just don't know what it is. Well, there's a paper's thickness. That one. God. see what it is so I'm gonna bring you guys in and show you what I found why I'm having why I'm having control arms hit now the axles are literally binding if you guys notice I'm gonna to try to do this and explain this best I can so right here let me get a light in there You see this little cutout right here? This is a cutout for the axle. So when my axle is riding in there, right now, the clearance I have between the bottom control arm and that diff cup is literally paper thin. So what happens is when this compresses, right, you see it go into this cutout right here? There's a cutout so the axle literally, look, you see? Now if you don't have that cutout, 
which is let me see if uh, this one will show it you see how there's no cutout right here I don't know if that's helping or hurting let's try that so right here there's no cutout for the axle so when this compresses and there's no cutout, the axle runs right into this. So if you notice on the back side here, right here, there's our cutout. But you can't flip the control arm over because this is a left side control arm. It's the same control arm as this one. So I'm going to see if I can find a set of rear control arms. I think that's where the problem lies. All right. So we're talking about this dip. So we know that this is the wrong control arm, that it needs to be over here on the V1. So here's the V4. And you can see the cutouts there. And the cutout is right there. And that is the same control arm as these. They're nice and straight. But look at the EXB. The EXB's got a curve. Not only that, the cutout is huge on the EXB. So I'm wondering if I can run EXB um, control arms on the rear of that. It might be a worthwhile upgrade. So... That's what I'm looking at, out of all three. So we might just do EXBs if I can find them. If they're not available, then we'll go with the V4s. Because that looks the same. So, like, comment, subscribe. And we will see you guys on my next video. And I'm going to dig for some control arms. Thanks for watching, guys.